All right, my friends, we looked at some symbols of America, specifically the flag. And today we're gonna to design our own flag and we're going to start in our sketchbooks. I want you to practice a flag before you do on your good paper. Step one is to choose your composition. Here I gave you some compositions that some countries use on their flags and the other side of your worksheet has some actual flags on it. I think I'm going to use this composition here. To make that composition, I'm making a sideways V and then I'm gonna make a line across it. Now in the American flag, there are stars here and stripes. Both of those are patterns made up of different shapes. I'm going to choose some patterns to put into my flag that I'm designing here. I think I want my country to be about brightness and light and happiness. So I'm going to make a little sun in that area there. You can see that instead of lines, I'm actually making rectangles. So that way I can fill these shapes when I do the painting part. And now I want to add a, two different patterns in that area there. I think I'll do one with stripes, kind of like the American flag. And I think I'm gonna do an arched line in this area, kind of like a rainbow to be more brightness and light in the country I'm designing my flag for. When I get to this area where I have my composition or my layout sectioned off, I'm just gonna lift up. All right, so now I'm happy with the design I made and I'm going to go ahead and do it on my good paper with the black pastel. Now I'm going to paint my flag. I wanna to try to pick colors that I think are representative of my country or kind of symbolize the way I want it to be. America's colors are red, white, and blue. You may choose those colors or totally different colors for your flag. I think I'm gonna start with blue and I'm going to paint stripes in a pattern. I'm gonna make mine an ABAB pattern. So I'm gonna fill in that light blue and rather than switching colors, what I'm gonna do is just leave it white for now. I'll go in in a little bit and fill that. So now I'm going to rinse my brush wipe it on the sponge just like always so I don't mix the colors and I'm going to choose my color to go in between this purple. As I'm painting I'm remembering that my paintbrush is like a ballerina. Ballerinas dance on their tippy toes. They never ever scoot around on their bottoms because nobody wants to go to the booty scooting ballet. So keep your paintbrush up on its tiptoes and make sure to rinse and dry off on the sponge. Now I think I'm gonna paint this kind of rainbowish shape. And I think I might actually do it in rainbow colors. So I'm gonna do red. After red comes orange. The way I remember this is by saying Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv is R stands for red. O stands for what I'm using right now, orange. Roy, yeah, yeah. Y stands for yellow. Green has the G, that's what the G is. And then Biv, B for blue. I is for indigo. We don't usually include indigo in our rainbows, but what indigo is, is like a bluish um, purple color, kind of an in-between. And lastly is violet. Violet is just another way to say purple. Now I'm gonna run out of room. I don't have an area for purple and I'm okay with that. If I wanted to, I could go up get with my pastel and add one more area. I'm gonna rinse my brush and now I'm gonna paint that sun. When I'm using yellow, I wanna make sure to rinse my brush really well because yellow kind of takes on other colors very, very easily. And now I'm gonna paint around that. When I'm painting around, what I do is I kind of trace that area. And you can see that I did overlap on my yellow a little bit because I'm kind of getting a green, but that's okay. The good news is yellow and blue do look pretty when they're mixed together. And so I'm just kind of okay with that. 
If I want to, I can flip my brush upside down and make patterns. This is called scruffito. That just means I'm scraping the paint off an area. Now, once I'm done painting this area, if I wanna go over any spots and add extra pattern, since I am adding pattern to my flag, I can do that. So I'm gonna finish up here, maybe do a little bit of scruffito, and then I think I'm gonna add some extra stripes on top. So I'm making these swirly lines. And then I think I'm gonna take this dark blue and I'm gonna make opposite lines on top of my stripes just for something extra. And maybe I'll do a dark purple. All right, now I'm ready to let my flag dry. All right, my friends, today I'm going to create a frame for my flag. When we frame something, usually that means it's important or that maybe it has value. And I think my flag is important. So I'm going to flip it upside down and trace around the outside of my flag with glue. My painting is still a little wet, so I might get some paint on my hands here, but yours will be totally dry. I'm gonna take it, stick it down, like I said, mine is a little bit wet, but what I want you to do is flip over your paper and give it a back rub. If I did that to mine, I would make a big stamp on my desk. Now I'm going to make a frame using paint sticks. I'm gonna choose colors that I think complement or look nice with my flag. I think I'm gonna start by making a diagonal line in each of the corners that go from my flag to the corner of the paper. I think I'm gonna make some other lines in between these, and then I'll fill in with more pattern. Now I'm also creating a pattern here, and you can see that I left empty areas because I'm gonna go in with a paint stick and fill. So I'm leaving that one area empty because I'm making an AB pattern, pink. And as of now it's white, but I think I'll go back in and add more color to that once I fill in my pink area. I think I'll fill blue in between. And then I think I'm going to color on top or draw on top just to add some extra detail to my frame to make it look more interesting for the viewer. I think I might make a couple of X's on top in that purple color I started with. So I think I'm gonna do an X on each of the pink areas. And maybe I'll do some other sort of design on the blue. I think I'll do a wavy line. Now the last step in this lesson is to just fill out a quick artist statement. The artist statement we're gonna do is called two stars and a wish. The two stars are things, things you think you did well, specifically having to do with craftsmanship. Craftsmanship is how well you did it, how carefully and nicely. So two things I think I did well. One goes in the first star. I like my rainbow. I like my rainbow. Another thing I think I did well. I like my frame. I like how I filled the white. So two stars and a wish. A wish is something you wish you would have done better or spent more time on. I wish I had been more careful around my son. Remember how I got some green there? I wish that I had been a little bit more careful and didn't get green there. You're gonna turn both of these into me. Make sure you write your name on your two stars and a wish, and then you'll be finished. You have a beautiful flag that's representative of a country you would like to make it shows your country's values. You've chosen a color scheme 
and it really looks amazing. We can see that you think it's important because you put it into a frame. Good job.